<clears throat> now, this is actually going to be a bit of a longer one because I've added something to this as well. But DS has asked, Why do you think it was hard for Brutus the Barber Beefcake to find any kind of reliable character or direction in WCW? After leaving... L after leaving legally, the Brutus gimmick couldn't be used out of uh, WWF. Was it, I got the job, so give me whatever character you want? Or was Beefcake just not that creative and only had the one good idea for a character? Now, I've added to this, because obviously I know you weren't in WCW at the time, and you probably weren't watching. Eric Bischoff recently made mention of Beefcake, and basically by make mention, I mean buried him. This is what Eric <laughs> said about uh, Beefcake going into the NWO in 1998. He didn't have it. And Leslie, this is Ed Leslie, as a performer was a very, very weak performer. He was great at being the barber, but he didn't have the talent or instinct to adapt and to embrace a character that would appeal to the 18 to 49-year-old demographic. It was classic square peg, round hole, and it didn't work. And we were forced. Well, he's the Brutus that he was the booty man, and then he was the disciple, and then he was whatever else he was. All of that was a reflection of the fact that we couldn't find anything to make this guy work. But he was part of the package. I presume part of the package with Hogan. And we had to give him some time and put him in a position where he could do the least damage to the product. That's <laughs> horrible to have to say, but it's true. Beefcake. 100%. Why couldn't they give him something that made it work? The guy, face it, the guy's connection to pro wrestling was Hulk Hogan. And they got him a job. Well, what? So what if you're sitting in creative one day? Hey, guys, uh, the barber beefcake coming in. We're going to change his, change his gimmick. What can we give him? Well, he may have been okay as the barber. I didn't. I don't see him drawing any money. But he was, he just, I agree with I agree with him that the, the beefcake was a uh, barber was a, he he couldn't work it. He couldn't refine it. He couldn't define it. He couldn't do anything with it. And the other stuff they gave him, what else did Bischoff say they gave him? Oh, I can give you even more in the WWF. He was the man with no face. He was the man with no hair. He was the man with no pubes in WCW. He was the booty man. Uh, who just shook his Aris at the fans, and that was it. And he, uh, uh, Diamond Dallas Page's wife, Kimberly, was his manager. Uh, he was the disciple, which was basically a beard. He just had a beard and sunglasses, and he'd hit the gym. You couldn't even tell it was Beefcake. He was almost just like a, he was Hogan's bodyguard in the NWO in 1998. And I think a lot of people, maybe even quite a few still, will still not know that Disciple was Beefcake. But, I didn't know that. Yeah. So essentially, that's it. He had an awful lot of so characters, he, but Beefcake was the only one that that was a big deal. Well, I agree with Mr. Bischoff. The guy just didn't have it. There's a lot of guys that have been pushed; they don't get over because you know the the gimmick has to match the wrestler's personality to make the people believe. I've seen guys change on shows. I'll give you a, a main thing. The the uh the fabulous ones in Memphis. Stan Lane and uh what was his name? Kern. Steve Kern. Yeah, Stan Lane and Steve Kern, right. Individually, and I've said this before, they 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 were good performers. They couldn't draw any money. But they put them together and juiced them up, made them look like something special put those sequin jackets on and walked out there to, to the song. They were going out. They were over from the beginning. People would just come see the fabulous ones because that was, they portrayed them as big stars. So that's what they did. And they, they could work too. And the gimmick matched them, you know, all the sharp dressed man and all this, it really, really worked. And but they gave him something, and this wasn't a creative team. This was just Jerry Jarrett's idea, but he hit on it. And say we would go to Nashville on Saturday night. Uh, the, the last week's card was it was okay, maybe a half a house. But this, the the fantastic show up. I mean, the, the fabulous ones show up. It's full, and I said, damn. This is, and that's how I learned. I said, you put something on the people like, you know, it might sell a ticket or two. <laughs> and, it, and it did. And those guys, 
they do the strut. You know, Jackie Fargo was a big name there, and he would do the he would strut back and forth like this, and people would go nuts for it. it is it wrestling? No. Is it good entertainment? Hell yeah. Because the people, they bought it. They bought a ticket to see it. And that's your sign of success. When you can go to a building where last week you did a, say, maybe 1,500 people and show up without an angle with just a gimmick and you do 3,000 people, that means that it's working. So they were a good team and drew a lot of money. It's funny you mentioned the fabulous ones because weirdly, Beefcake, the character, especially the earlier version of the character, had he had the struts, he had the sequins, he had a lot of things that were actually quite similar to the fabulous ones, even though they're completely different characters. Uh, very quickly, did you ever share a locker room with Beefcake? I met him, but I never was around him too much. No. 